piece also has that that edge that I spoke of if we it's unfinished and yeah it has that kind of solid tooth precision oh I see with because you know that's that that's a when I look at that 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 is part of the manufacturing process that you see in there that you'd be familiar with if you've ever got anything MDF yeah. or whatever cut yeah you know yeah, so it leaves that uh, kind of telltale path. Yeah. And it's great when you have mirroring or so edges that mirror one another. Yeah. Because um, it seems like it'll it'll perform the same um, signature cut mm. based on my file, I guess, at, mm. at similar times. And I, I mean, those are intentional, oh, so really? that's easy. Yeah. But but uh, sometimes without me, so it's almost like a fingerprint that's repeated. Yeah, the... and I don't know why. If it's something right. in my file, or if it's just something in the in the machine. Yeah. Are these laser cut? Those are water jet. Right. Because it's a very so it's a very very narrow jet, extremely narrow high pressure jet of water. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and then you can tell it'll it'll flare out based on the material that it's going through. Yeah, and the oh, settings. See. So obviously, where you've got more of the mark in it is further away. It from must the be jet. reacting with yeah. the yeah. Just, it was cut from the top, and then yeah. yeah, I guess if it gets bigger down there, it's because it. However, it's however it's the uh, the setting is on on the tip. Yeah, that they can adjust per material, but also as that then goes through the material, it will. It will react yeah. in a certain way. So, David, this is this is a finished piece. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to tell us what it is? Yeah, it's mostly finished. Most it's um, it's gonna be a two-sided piece. Yeah. And I just haven't decided how to mount it for one. Yeah. And if it'll be wall-mounted or pedestal-mounted, I'm still trying to figure that out. But basically, so two-sided, as in it, it'll actually have a, on the back side. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've been trying to figure that out for a while now, um, but it, so it's on the wall just so that I can consider that. Um, it's made of foam. Yeah. Um, Cor Cora Foam is the brand name. Yeah. And uh, the other side of the design is basically this flipped upside down. Yeah. So you'll walk around it oh, this way and it'll be like an inversion of but uh, this was um, this design was done, I think, in two thousand five. Yeah. And I made a bigger piece that was just like this, wall mounted, and um, I think it was that exact design. But maybe the the one that I showed in Paris was um, more like four feet. And I suppose because the thing is, you're using uh, because you're using the computer de design process. You can actually make these whatever scale is possible with the machinery that is producing them. Yeah, that's so if you go big, big, big. If you have big, big machines, you right. can go. Pretty yeah, tenseless. I can. I can scale it. it. Being vector based, I can scale it to whatever size. Yeah. But um, I am limited by the material. So yeah. if this shape, for instance, gets above four by eight or five by ten then I really have to do some uh, investigating to figure out where to get a blank you know a blank sheet that's of whatever material that big yeah but other than that yeah I could scale it up to whatever yeah I, that's what I, I love about uh, using that software as well so is this is this done on this is done Illustrator mm -hmm. and you will you so you would have actually sketched this out scanned it in sort of digitize it essentially yeah and um, do you do you then kind of manipulate the color yeah I, I I usually will start off with a color way a color scheme that yeah. I um, that I use to divide parts and you know cut away yeah uh, like this circle who knows how that was created but yeah. it was obviously you know you can get some of that irregularity and then um, bits like this get get removed 
I, th I think that was an accident that oh, maybe right. a yeah, rectangle yeah. was off of it. Of course, yeah. and, and ends up being a move that I wouldn't have made, but I really liked it. So then, there you have it. But yeah, I yeah. but I will use those colors to to then help me decide, you know, which which areas stay, which shapes, and then layer them out and try to make a physical reality out of those. Because uh, yeah. there's been a couple of times I'm getting I'm pretty good, but. Um, where I've created um, shapes and, and um, layers mm. where they weren't supported by anything underneath it. <laughs> like there oh, would be a right. big cavity and then it's like, ah, oh, fuck. And, and then it now what a, yeah, so then, yeah. you know, you, you, you figure it out, but. Um, but it's interesting again, because it's like the tension between something being completely abstract on the computer where, you know, it doesn't matter if it doesn't, in a way it doesn't matter if it doesn't work in real life. And then suddenly, when you're actually out doing it, right, it you're reminded. Yeah. yeah, you're reminded of, of you using real stuff. Yeah, you know, material. Yeah, it's uh, converting. What is that? Bits to atoms. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So um, it's fun, and and it's. I I prefer to. I think I react to the world to make my designs and so forth. So um, there is that back and forth on the computer. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to regain that in the in the work. Um, I didn't word that very well, but um, no, I know, I know whenever I got on to this work, for instance, it was like um, I was cutting some shapes out of foam board, mm. discarding the big sheets and then putting together these packages that I was making. Um, that were going to hang on the wall and they were layered up and yeah. you could see the layers through them. But, um, but really those discarded sheets that I had off to the side were making some really cool patterns and, and things that were, mm. were better than what I was making over here. So, um, it's important to respond to those and, and especially for someone like me. Yeah. And I feel like too much time spent on the computer can, can influence things in a way that uh, that I need to remind myself not to. You know, mm. I do need to create in the in with atoms. Yeah, because I suppose the thing is, you know, you're not getting the offcuts and the you know the things you reject and the the other serendipitous thing that happens with material. Yeah, when you're just dealing with you know the computer. Yeah, because you do. I do so yeah. much editing on there, and it's good. It saves um, money for one, but you're right, like I don't get, sometimes I get off shoots, like this is all extra stuff that I'm gonna figure out what to do with. Yeah. And that's just it, like re reminding myself that. Um, so this this is felt. And this is It's, a, it's such a beautiful um, material as well. Again, it, it's using that manufacturing process, but the material itself is, um, th because there's actually, I'm just, this is just occurring to me in a way now, the, the materials that you're producing this out of, once you've designed them, once you've produced the design, the materials themselves are actually quite seductive materials. Like the, 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 the felt, I can imagine mm -hmm. people will get into yeah, trouble yeah. all of the time for touching your artworks I, when they're installed in I'm, the gallery. Yeah, I constantly am getting asked how to clean fingerprints <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah. And they are, and I yeah. think uh, along the lines of what you said, they're accessible, I think, for, yeah. for many people on this um, sensual level or you know like yeah. that that they want they want to experience it with their hands yeah they invite tactility don't they yeah this this is something you're working on as well at the moment yeah it's Can all the script? yeah it's it's uh it's all cut and just ready to be assembled yeah um but to talk you through the design of this which yeah. which is a little bit different than what i was doing before it's more of a of a collaboration um i would say yeah and so what I started out with were, was using the mouse, making these quick gestures. Yeah. So it was like muscle spasms or something. I'd right. have the mouse and I would just, you know, and then that one, Yeah. there it is. I zoom in and then trace that line on yeah. either side so that it becomes a shape in itself. But then at that point, those two together, I would broaden the stroke in yes. the software. Yeah in varying incre increments, so it creates this digital accretion that, that uh, goes out and in and ends up forming these lines. So that's how these edges were made. It was mm. just in broadening those strokes, outlining them at a certain point, and then um, 
out here with Dave Hickey, I remember him talking about, uh, I forget which artist, but basically their mm. ability to um, make this mark. Yeah. That was, like, maybe it was John Singer Sargent, you know, like, white paint right there, scarf, yeah. done. That's what it feels like, you know? Like, yeah. an amazing uh, virtuoso. Yeah. So having yeah. that, having that um, ability, I started thinking about that, you know, and what that means to me and what that means this day and age. And, um, and, and so that's definitely in there. It's using, for me, that muscle memory or that signature. Yeah. It, it's, it's sort of this rehearsed, somehow it feels natural and rehearsed like a signature would be. Mm. And that's why I think that it, I'll, I need to really consider this, but uh, why I go back and then retrace it. Yeah so that I'm thinking about that line while I'm making the line, which initially I wasn't. It was yes. just, there it is. Yeah. And now I go back and it's so conscious of it that it's like trying to play the piano while you're thinking I'm playing the piano. You know, yes. it's better to just let it happen. Yeah. Um, but I like that because I think there's the, um, you know, like you asking me what is modernism and I kind of, uh, tripped and, and got awkward and clumsy. That's a human condition, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that uh, we experience daily and, and hourly when you're certain people. And so um, I, it, I think it's natural that it would come out in my work and that I would be interested in that because I'm, I'm um, trying to figure out myself as much as I'm trying to figure out the world, you know? So, so yeah. maybe this is, is, is that approach. Yeah, there's a tension there's a tension in a lot of this work, I think, uh, between control and, uh, not so much control and letting go, but control and trying to uh, let, you know, whether it's the software or it's the material or the technology or the processes, let uh, them have input into the, mm. the development of a work, into, you know, that actual, um, you know, within the practice of actually producing the work, let, letting those things have that indeterminate, you know, like Dadaist, uh, Duchampian kind of input, yeah. whilst you also maintain a certain amount of control, but being able to let go a little bit. Yeah, I try to remind myself daily, let go. Yeah. Because uh, my instinct is to, to go in and polish things out. You know, I would have gotten rid of all of these glitches. Yeah. But that's what... That's what happened, you know. I mean, I, th I, I think these glitches, are, these glitches are great. I think I did chew, you know. I and I, I guess what it is is reminding myself that uh, that that's what happens when when I'm when I allow it, you know. Yeah. And 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 push, I guess, push the the software to do things that it didn't necessarily want to. It's almost like little muscle spasms coming out of the computer. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. Yeah, it's trying to make sense of of my instructions and and that's what it comes up with it's fascinating to me yeah something from here caused that to go across all the yeah. way um, you know this line um, all of those breaks you don't know you're gonna get that out of the process until no. the glitch actually happens right and that's that I think is incredibly fascinating yeah I know when uh, when I was young in Texas I used to uh, we had a water spigot water fountain Oh yeah. When the water hose wasn't connected or whatever, and sometimes when it was, I'd turn it on just a little bit to let the, um, so it would kind of trickle out. And yeah. then we had a big slab and right outside the door and I used to make patterns. And, um, and oftentimes like get the ants trapped in there or yeah. whatever, but you never quite knew, you know, what kind of structure you were going to make initially when you turned it on. And then you would you know, react to it, you know, based yeah. on, whatever your goals were trapping yeah. ants let's make a barn here and here you know <laughs> yeah. so uh there, there's some, when you said that it reminded me of, of that it's a similar um reaction i guess to to whatever's going on to that chance of the randomness yeah Probably. and and something that just crossed my mind my interest in using felt was this visual kind of texture yeah that a new you know would it makes me want to touch it i'm yeah. heading it as we talk yeah um <laughs> Conservators are going to hate you with <laughs> probably, but I'm going to. I'm thinking maybe I'll include a lint roller with each piece. Yeah. Hopefully, it's that easy. But I was thinking it's also a floppy material. Yet yeah, I'm, you know, shoving my control in there, and I'm trying to make it 
as layered and rigid as felt can be. So when it hangs on the wall, for instance, the two pieces that I had in the in the recent show, yeah, that was the first time I used it. They hung a lot like these. You could mm. tell they were different, but I integrated some of the censure in. So I think it confused some people, but they were definitely getting this uh, textural uh, response to yeah. it. Um, but then you know the edges are layered up a lot like I do in the in the other work. So. As much as I say I'm letting go, I'd rather be a Barnett Newman than a Jackson Pollock. Yeah. But but it, but I grew up with uh, punk sensibilities, or at least I admired those, and you know, yeah. and and so I I always think I have it in me, which means I do. But yeah. I also have you know other influences that are, are always fighting it out. <laughs>